Hey everyone, I'm Jack Watson, full-time UI UX designer, illustrator, animator, donut connoisseur, and I'll be your host for today's Illustrator Illustration Challenge. Today, we'll be working on combining line work and color fills. Um, how can I color in my line art in Illustrator has to be one of, another one of the most asked questions I get. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of a twist to it today. Uh, you can find links in the description below this video to other challenges, our creative communities on Discord. We've also got a link to download your free resources to create along with us today, which includes the file I'll be working in. Speaking of... There we go, let's uh, hop on over to our starter file. I've got some notes off to the side here. We're going to be uh, jumping over to Illustrator, to Illust we're in Illustrator. We're going to be jumping over to Photoshop for a little bit today, uh, but we're going to be mostly in Illustrator. Um, we're going to be creating, uh, we're going to be using this technique actually that comes from, um, well, I'll get into it. I'll get into it when we get there. Um, I'm going to start out with some line work. So let's just get going. Um, maybe I'm just not, I'm not going to tell you what we're going to work on today. Uh, we're going to be working on the pen tool a lot. So um, we're going to get a lot of practice in there, but I'll leave it up to you to kind of guess what we're going to be working on. But to get started, as always, I'm going to be using a shape. So I'm going to click and hold down on my shape options over here. And I'm going to grab an ellipse tool because, uh, you know, I always like to start out with a shape and I've got smart guides on under view you can see i've got them checked on you can check them on and off down here in the view menu i like to have them on for tasks like this because i'm really bad at aligning things visually and i need some help so we can see here we're aligned at the center and for today i'm going to hold down shift and alt or shift and option depending on if you are on windows or mac and that'll let me drag a circle out from the center so <laughs> that's where we're going to start i all i knew it as soon as i drew a circle out um, the people in our live chat over here on Behance uh, and on, a, on, a, on the Adobe Live YouTube channel were going to suggest donuts, but uh, surprisingly, you were not drawing donuts today. <laughs> Alright, we're going to switch to the rectangle tool, and I'm going to use my smart guides to kind of create another rectangle, just dragging out a shape here. Um, that's going to be about the same width as my circle. Alright, so now that I've got that, I'm going to drag this down overlapping my circle a little bit. You can hold down shift if you need help, otherwise just use your smart guides to line it on up. We want to cover this up about uh, a quarter of the way, so like a fourth of this, maybe even a little bit farther down. Alright, next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to, Corey in our live chat is saying circle. <laughs> All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag to select both of these shapes and we are going to use the shape builder tool today. If you don't see the shape builder tool, it might be under your live paint bucket. Um, you can just click and hold down here and grab the shape builder tool. It looks like that. And if you just kind of drag normally, it's actually going to combine your shapes. So, ooh, we've got Cody Bears guessing a top hat. That's a great idea. Maybe. If you just drag normally with the shape builder, it's actually going to join shapes. So I can either click or I can click and hold and drag, and you can see it's going to highlight the shapes that I'm joining. So we're just going to join these shapes here. So we've got that shape. It kind of does look like a person with a hat, right? And then I can actually hold down Alt this time, Alter option, and it'll change my cursor to a subtract or a little minus sign. And uh, we can click to remove that top shape. So now we've got kind of a circle with a flat top to it. And I'm going to just round out the top a little bit here to kind of keep everything consistent. So I can do that by either selecting my shape and just kind of rounding all of the corners out at once. I might get a little error here. Well, it's not really an error. It's more like a constraint, like I've dragged the corner as much as I can. Or I can just um, select with the direct selection tool, dragging to select to the left outside and holding down shift, dragging to select the right side. We'll select all four of the corners there and I can round them out this way. There we go. Um, if you want to join our live chat here on Behance or on the uh, Adobe Live YouTube, we're live every day at 9.30 a.m. Pacific. You can hang out with all the people guessing. Stoney saying fishbowl, Corey saying croc, uh, Cody Bear says flower pot, all great guesses. All right, let's switch over to our pen tool here, and now we're going to start to get into some uh, pen, pen tool work. Um, with the pen tool, again, using smart guides, I'm going to use them to kind of align along this edge here because I want to bring a little bit of that edge back into place. So 
I'm going to click and then holding down shift or just using my um, smart guides, I'm going to make another point. When you're working with the pen tool, you can actually hit escape while you're working with it, and that's going to release the line for you. So if you want to just kind of keep drawing, um, you can just keep hitting escape as you click. So I don't I want to end that line. And then I'm going to drag out another line. I'm going to hit escape to get rid of that line, deconnect it, disconnect it. And then we're going to add another one. Ooh, clever says a cauldron. That's a great suggestion too. All of these ideas that you guys are throwing out, feel free to use them as well for um, you know what you make for today's challenge. All right, so we've got a nice uh, shape going. Not going to give it away. <laughs> All right, let's switch back, and we're going to switch back to using the shape tools just kind of briefly for this next part. I'm going to drag out a circle here. We're going to kind of start somewhat in the middle, and it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just going to kind of draw out an oval shape with the, the ellipse tool. And then switching to my direct selection, I'm going to select the front point, holding down shift, I'll select the back point, and we're going to change that to be corner point. So we've got kind of an eye shape or an almond shape going on right now. Maybe it is something spooky, you never know. Uh, spooky theme for today. And then I'm going to click on the front here, and I'm going to drag this out just a little bit with my round corner. Again, selecting with the direct selection tool to just kind of round it out a little bit. All right, let's start to get fancy with the line work with the pen tool now that we got the hang of it. Um, I'm going to grab my pen tool over here and I'm gonna kind of align myself with the top edge of this shape. Now you can create uh, individual points and those are corner points and they're great, but we can also drag and that's gonna give us anchor handles. And the direction that you drag is gonna be the direction that you want your line to go. So if I'm going up, it's gonna go up to the left. If I'm going down, it's gonna go down to the right, right? So dragging up in the direction I want this to go. Oop. I can then add like another point here. Again, moving in the direction I want this to go. And then I can add another point here. And you can go back in here. Oh, you know what? There's one thing that we forgot to do. Uh, we need to remove fill. So we're only working on the line work right now. So I'm going to drag to select everything. And in my uh, fill and stroke here, you can see I've got the default set up. I'm going to remove that um, fill. You can either do it down here, selecting none, or you can go over here to your swatches panel and remove it. All right, so we've got the shape there. But let's say I really like the way that's looking. I want to make some adjustments. With the direct selection tool, I can click on this point here. And anytime I click on a point, I can adjust that point's anchor handle. So I can kind of adjust this if I don't like the way that these look, kind of get them in a better position. Maybe we'll bring this one down, moving these points. It's really up to you how you want to adjust these and how you want your shape to look. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to start to move a little bit quicker. Um, because, you know, for the sake of time, but feel free to take your time working on this. Uh, you don't, I'm not, ex you know, you're not, if you're new to the tool, you're probably going to need to spend a little time practicing. So the other thing you can do with this tool is when you're drawing out anchor handles, you can hold down shift and holding down shift, just like when you do with shapes, it's going to constrain it. So I can keep it kind of perfectly straight as I draw. It's going to create like a nice curve into a straight line. And then we'll click down here. And then the other thing that I can do with the uh, pen tool is I can drag out a shape and then and so if I don't want to have, let's say I only want to have it curve on the right side, I can then click back when I hover over that original point and it gives me a little corner anchor point or a, a convert anchor point um, tool. And when I, when I click back on that point, it's going to convert it so that the next line that I draw is going to be straight at a corner. So we curved to the right side. We can see that that anchor handle is still there, but we've removed it on the other side. So now we've got kind of a corner point going. Just like that, I'm going to adjust this point a little bit since I want it to be a little bit more curved. And we can also go back and use live corners with those um, with the uh, pen tool. So even though this is using the pen tool, we can click on that point that we made and I changed my mind. I want it to be a little bit rounder. So clicking on with the direct selection, I'm gonna round it out a little bit again. All right, let's do, let's cheat a little bit. Let's drag and select our shape and go to object, transform, reflect. Um, we are gonna flip it on the horizontal axis instead of the vertical axis. So make sure that that's selected if you're following along. And we're gonna hit copy, remembering that if we hit okay, it's actually just gonna flip our original shape. We want to hit copy in order to make a copy. Lots of guesses coming in. Um, Richard says treasure chest. Gerard says a fish tank. Uh, Anki says a submarine. 
That would be also a great, a great guess. There we go. All right, we're going to add one more kind of shape to this. I think you guys can probably figure out what we're doing by now, but we're going to drag down, drag up a little bit, over, and then drag back. There we go. Looking pretty good. Again, I can hit escape while I'm doing this to deselect from my line. And then down here, I'm going to drag, making sure I'm aligned with like the bottom edge here. I'm going to drag down to curve my line down first. And then over on the opposite side, I'm going to drag so that the left point is going up and that's going to curve my shape kind of back going up. So you can see that it's pointing up. This is up. It's pointing down. This is down. So I don't know if that's helpful uh, to help you get a better grasp on the uh, pen tool. It does take some practice. Here we go. Looking pretty good. Let me bring this down a little bit. It's really just a matter of, I never get the shapes right on the first try. I usually have to go through and kind of make some adjustments. So don't worry if you don't get it quite lined up the first time you do this. You know, you can always go back and make adjustments. That's the great thing about working in Vector. All right, I'm going to switch one more time to the uh, circle tool here. And we're going to add a couple circles in. We're going to draw one out here, holding down shift to keep them kind of constrained. And we'll add a couple more circles. Like I said, if you are uh, comfortable with the pen tool, you could really go crazy here and add a couple more details if you wanted to. I think that's going to be enough for, um, for today. All right, I'm going to drag to select everything that's on my artboard. And I'm going to hit command G to group everything. Now that I've got everything grouped, I'm going to make some adjustments before we hop over to Photoshop. I'm going to go over here to the stroke panel. If you don't see it, you can go to window stroke. If you don't see any of these panels, um, they're going to be in that window. And I'm just going to increase this line weight up. I want it to be a little bit heavier. 10 point looks good. And there's a couple other adjustments I want to make. So when you're working with a closed shape, um, Illustrator will you know, try to be helpful and it aligned this shape to um, the, the stroke to the inside. So you can see that if you see the little green um, highlights, those are indicating like my shapes kind of points and, and sort of like the, the path of my um, line. I can, it's currently on the inside of that. All of these, if we look at our stroke panel, are aligned to um, the center here. Uh, the stroke is aligned to the center. So we're going to change our outside stroke here to be also aligned to the center. And when we do that, it's going to snap our um, points so they're back in place, just like uh, the rest of our lines here. Just a, a minor detail to make sure that we've got everything lined up, right? Oh, I almost forgot a really important part. Let's do that really quickly. I'm going to switch to the pen tool, and I'm going to draw a line straight across. We're going to go up to our effects. We're going to add a zigzag, so under effects, Distort and transform, we're going to add a zigzag effect. And I'm going to change it to smooth. And changing it to smooth down here is going to change it from being kind of like mountain shaped to being, uh, well, wave shaped. You can adjust the size to increase the sort of peaks and valleys if you want a more intense wave pool. Or you can increase or decrease the number of ridges to make your um, design have more waves or less waves. We're going to hit OK. And what we need to do for today is we actually need to go to object and expand appearance on that line to make it an actual path. And we're going to just kind of hold down shift with the selection tool and scale it down a little bit so it's in the inside edges. For the, the sake of today, what we're doing with live paint, um, it's OK. The lines, just, the lines have to create closed areas. Clo the live paint tool is going to be working by um, figuring out if you've got an area that's closed. So we want to kind of drag that in a little bit, but we want to make sure that it still kind of visually connects with the edges. All right, now let's select everything and hit Command G to make a group. And then we're going to hop over to Photoshop. So over in Photoshop, I need to make a document that's going to match what I have in Illustrator. So I'm going to go to New File. And I'm actually going to pick one of these web settings to get started. That's going to set everything up since my Illustrator document is set up for screens. Um, I want my Photoshop document to also be set up for screens. I also want to set up my width and height here to match the artboard size. So if we hop back over to Illustrator really quick and I jump to the um, artboard tool here and I click on it, you can see up in the top in the control bar, it's going to show me that my width and height of my artboard are 1080 by 1080. So back over here, we're going to set our artboard to be the same size. 
1080 by 1080. We're going to hit OK or create. Now we're going to copy this by selecting it, Command C, and we can paste it right into Photoshop. We're going to paste it as a smart object that's going to keep it vector from Illustrator. Um, these other options here, like pixels, are going to place it um, and sort of like rasterize it. We, we want to work with smart objects. We're going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit Enter. You can see that when I placed it, it had that little X over it. That meant that it was just kind of like hanging out. Um, hitting Enter is actually placing it in the file. So we want to do that. And now, like I said, this is an interesting technique. It's typically used for like if you have a piece of low resolution artwork, like specifically like line art or a logo. If a lo if a client gives you like a low resolution logo, you might use this technique to try and sharpen it up. It may seem counterintuitive at first, but you're gonna see that this is gonna make a really cool kind of like filled corner rough line look. I know that somebody in the Discord earlier was asking about making like a stained glass to create those like leaded connected lines. And this would be a way you could do that. So to get started, we're going to be do something that's a little bit counterintuitive. We're going to go to filter and we're going to go down to blur and we're going to pick a Gaussian blur. And we're going to blur our uh, design a little bit. You don't want to go crazy. You want to still have it be recognizable, just a little bit blurry. So something like it's going to depend on the size of the art that you're making, but something around this, something around three is probably going to be a good place to be. I think it's by default, like, I don't know, like, I think it starts you off, the tool starts you on, like, one. So just kind of increase it a little bit until you get just out of focus. So now we've got a blurry fish. Um, we're going to go up to the top and we're going to bring it back into focus. We're going to do that by adding an adjustment layer. I like to use adjustments layers in Photoshop instead of applying the adjustments directly on the image because I think that it's it's just a non-destructive way to work and I can control it a little bit better and kind of go back and make adjustments. So um, under layer, I'm going to drop down to new adjustment layer and we're going to pick curves. I'm going to say, okay, make me curves layer. It's going to add it to our layer stack down here. And you can see I've got this properties panel over here. Just like in Illustrator, if you have a window that you're not seeing, they're going to be in your Windows dropdown. So you can just make sure you've got properties checked on. And this lets you adjust the dark and light values. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to actually bring them really, really sharp in the middle. And that's going to adjust the contrast up a lot. So we're going to start by sliding over the lightness on the right, and we're going to pull it until it gets closer to the middle. You can already see it's starting to sharpen my image and kind of like get rid of like some of those grays. It's going to bring it kind of like into like a in a focus. So I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. I'm going to pull it on the right. And you can see as I do that, everything starts to get really, really soft on the edges here. I used to do this technique uh, back in the day in Illustrator by drawing in the corners, like actually with like uh, lines, but this is a way easier way to do that. Um, so yeah, there we go. We've got our lines kind of set up and it kind of softens them and adds this kind of like cool, like connected line look. So now you're wondering, how do we get out of here? <laughs> we're going to go and we're going to actually select all this line work with the, you can use the magic wand tool or you can use um, select like a color range. I'm going to just use the magic wand tool. I know all the Photoshop people are probably judging me, but you know, it is what it is. You use what you use. And I'm going to select the outside line, holding down shift. I'm going to select the fish. I'm just going to make sure I've got everything, all of my lines selected. And to bring this back over to Illustrator, I'm going to go over to Paths. I need to make a working path. So a working path is a, the crates similar to Illustrator, like anchor points that we can bring over. Oops, I missed a little bit. To Illustrator. I'm go over in my Paths um, hamburger menu, and I'm going to hit Make Work Path. I want to set the tolerance down pretty low. Having the tolerance up higher is going to give me fewer points. Um, and having it set down low is going to give me uh, more, it's going to keep my line a little bit closer to um, the original drawing. So I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to immediately see something that looks very familiar. You're going to see anchor points that are kind of approximating um, the paths that I created. And I can just hit Command C to copy those. We can hop back over to Illustrator now. I'm going to open up my layers panel. Again, I want to work non-destructively, so I'm going to hide my original line work since I don't want to accidentally overwrite that. And then I'm going to press uh, create a new layer down here by clicking the button in the layers panel. 
And we're going to paste this into Illustrator just using Command V. And it's going to give us this option here. And we need to make sure that we paste this in as a compound shape that says fully editable in parentheses. And that's important. Compound path faster down here. If you paste that in using that, it's going to paste it in a way that when we try to use um, live paint, it's actually just going to treat everything as individual paths. And it's not going to, you'll get like a fill that kind of fills the whole shape. So make sure you select compound shape gonna hit OK and you're gonna see that it's gonna bring in our line work and it's got this kind of cool rough uh, soft edged look already. Let's add a fill color so we can actually see it. I'm gonna double click in here and let's pick a color here. Let's pick something that's like a nice... I'm not gonna go with black, I'm gonna go with like a navy. Alright, so now we can actually see our line work again. We'll bring it up and kind of center it back on our artboard. Oop, I think I accidentally held down shift and alt to make a copy. And now we can start to add some uh, fills to this using our um, live paint tool. So over here where we had Shape Builder, I'm going to hold down and switch to the live paint bucket tool. And we're going to start to add some fills. So how the live paint tool works is anywhere that Illustrator detects that there's like a closed in area, you can fill that with a fill color. So if you've got any openings, it's not going to understand that like you want to actually fill two separate things. So you want to kind of make sure that when you're doing this, you, ha you have like these boundaries set up so that Illustrator knows where to start and stop a fill. And with the live paint tool, I can actually edit these colors on the fly. So I can go in here and I can start to like pick some colors. Let's add just a, let's start with like a blue for the water. And then I can click, oh, I, this is important. So when, when Photoshop brings this in, it makes this kind of unique compound path that we need to expand. So we need to go to Object. If I open up my uh, Layers panel, you can actually see in here this compound shape. Illustrator doesn't really know what to do with that, so we're going to go to Object and Expand Appearance. Now we can fill this. So I'm going to click, and I can just start to click to add colors. We can kind of like lighten this blue by double-clicking back into our uh, color picker there. You could color the lines, actually. Color in the center, just like that. Double clicking in here, I'll pick a nice kind of orange color, maybe like a yellowy orange. Something like that. And we'll start to fill in these. And you can go back over this too. I'm clicking to go through this relatively fast to just kind of see how things look. But if you wanted to go back and say like, actually, I want to add a little bit of shading to this. So we'll go with like a nice kind of like a, a red orange and I'll add like that red orange kind of like to these bottom shapes here so we can start to add a little bit indicate a little bit of shading maybe we'll go with like a mid mid tone here and just like that you know lighten this up a little bit there we go Oop. there we go all right and then you could add like a little background if you wanted to as well. I'll drag out a shape here, um, like a nice blue, dragging it out to fill my background. I'll go to object, transform, or no, object, arrange, and send back. Lighten this up a little bit, maybe something like that. The last thing that I might do to add some details here is I would actually switch my fill and stroke, double click on my stroke bring this all the way to white, and this is just something I like to do. And using the pen tool, I'll add a little bit of a line here and increase the stroke to kind of indicate that there's a little bit of a highlight on this edge. But once you're ready, you can share this in our Discord. We're gonna go to File, Export, Export for Screens. Um, we're gonna save this out just wherever. We're gonna save it to that starter files folder. And I'm going to go over here to our Discord. You can find the link again in the description below the video. And uh, once you're in our Discord, you're going to see a lot of channels over on the left side. But you're going to navigate down to where it says Daily Creative Challenge. DCC Feedback is the channel you're looking for. You can just drag your PNG or JPEG right into Discord and say um, uh, Live Paint Fish Bowl. It's important to provide some context. Let everybody know what this challenge is for. That way our mentors can look at it and go, oh yeah, I remember that challenge if you're posting in the future. And you could take a look at what everybody else is working on. Uh, Kadrov or Robert is working on this adorable African elephant. We've got uh, this one from Satlin that I really liked. It had this like funky texture applied to it. Really great stuff. 
loved these patterns by satlin as well the the like subtle the colors in this one are just like really subtle and they work really nicely but that's gonna be it for me for today i hope you had a good time enjoyed working on this uh let me see your work in the discord um thank you for joining me for this illustrator illustration challenge uh, with a little bit of Photoshop. We went over the pen tool, we went over live paint, and that really cool Photoshop technique. We are live every day at, at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time at behance.net slash Adobe Live, and on the Adobe Live YouTube channel. So stay tuned for more live content after me. Bye for now, everybody.